Welcome to Humankind Open Dev, which is going to be a set of scenarios testing various areas of humankind. Now, these are going to be a very small slices of the game, and this is a very early version of the game, so keep that in mind. However, if you want to apply for Open Dev yourself, you can do that using a link in video description. These are not going to be very long. The first one seems to be focused on discovery and growth, and estimated time to completion is 45 minutes. I'm also going to record and upload this video in 4K, because this game just looks so good. So if you have a big enough monitor, then make sure you are watching in 4K or in 1440p. You can change that in the bottom right corner. So, let's get started. Objective. Raise a great city of many souls, protected by many armies, and whose influence stretches into new lands. Alright then. Seriously though, this game just looks so good. Especially in 4K, which is how I'm playing it right now. This is also the first time I can actually show you my own humankind gameplay. Because my previous video was B-roll, as I mentioned in that video. But now I actually get to play and record and show you. So let's see what we got here. We got two scouts and we could actually separate them, which might be a better idea for exploration. This army contains a single unit only, but it is still using one of your empire's generals to be able to keep creating units without suffering from a money upkeep cost. Due to insufficient generals, you can merge your armies. Right, so if you have too many armies, but not enough generals, you will get a money upkeep penalty. But early on it's probably worth it for exploration purposes. So let's maybe just send them separately and see how we can manage that. Alright, so here we got a curiosity. We can go there to get a reward. We can also build an outpost already. You only need like a single unit to do that. You don't need a settler like in civilization, for example. And outposts will allow you to claim neutral territory. And here's our city, Babylon. So let's take a look. Your city is now set up in a territory. The territory's borders are painted in your empire's colors. Yep, that's the blue one. So this part works kind of the same way as in Endless Legend, for example. The territories have preset borders and you cannot change those. So you either control that territory or you do not. So the territory's borders are painted in your empire's colors and any extensions can be built in this territory. Waters will expand the exploited area of your city and increase its production. So again, kind of similar as in Endless Legend, you can build quarters and expand your city and get more yields from more tiles, basically. Okay, so extension construction. Let's build a quarter then. What do we have here? We got Astronomy House, plus two food per researchers, plus two science per adjacent farmer's quarter, plus one researcher slot on settlement. So that's up here. We got one node right now, and I can move him around if I want to. So right now we have two slots for science, two for money, two for industry, and so on. Then we got farmer's quarter, more food, obviously. We got maker's quarter for more production. These are not quarters, so these are the types of buildings you can only have one of, as far as I'm aware. But let's build the farmer's quarter. So now we can place it, let's say, down here to get more food. If it's supposed to be about growth, then let's focus on food then. So now the quarter is under construction. It will take five turns. Now I could speed that up by moving my dod. That will not give us enough. But once we get more population, we will be able to move them around 
to get the different amounts of yields. So that's something to consider. We can also pick our science, or rather our research. We got calendar, domestication, carpentry and city defense. So calendar will unlock the research quarter and the commons quarter and the granary. Let's go with that. Stability and influence are pretty important, I assume. So we'll go with that. And let's explore. We'll send these two dots in opposite directions, preferably. See what we can find. With this army action, you can set up an outpost in an unclaimed territory. In the future, this outpost can become a city. Yep. So you do not need a settler specifically, you just need a dude. That's pretty much it. So we can place an outpost next to the oasis, for example. I would say maybe over here to get at least a little bit of production from that forest. Over here would also be good for the science. But then we'll need a quarter to expand towards the forest to get more production. But this spot is okay, I suppose. Let's go with that. So that will start the outpost. And we can keep exploring. You can destroy lairds and enemy outposts or quarters using ransack action. An army can only ransack a tile if it is able to reach it during the same turn. Alright. Let's do that then. So right here, ransack. So yep, we are standing on top of it. There it is. Resource depot. Or rather, resource deposit. This element indicates the location of a resource deposit. Resources can be exploited by a city or an outpost in the same territory. There are two types of resources. Strategic resources, with grey icon, are used as prerequisites for some constructibles. And luxury resources provide economic bonuses for all your cities. And we can hover over it. This is salt. That will give us plus 2 food per salt and plus 5 stability per salt. In all our cities. Alright. You have destroyed the lair. Go us. Hover over the ransack icon to see your spoils. Right here. Doesn't say what exactly we plundered. Right here. 22 gold. Okay. Let's move on then. We'll go in the opposite direction, as I said. I don't know if there are any AIs in here. I assume yes. <laughs> but that's not the focus of this particular scenario. Alright, so... We did start the outpost. So this is already claimed. Let's move on. And eventually, we will be able to turn it into a city. So again, that's how you get more cities. Our granary is still under construction, or rather, the farmer's quarter. I'm still thinking in terms of sieve, because I played it so much. You've chosen a scientist culture. You now have access to a special action related to science. Let's select one of your cities to learn how to use it. From your cities, you can create military units. Well, yeah, I figured as much. So, like another scout, for example. This isn't what the game was going to talk about, however, but okay. And this guy looks interesting. Cannot be done without enough strategic resource deposits. Right, so we cannot get him. Okay, let's get another scout then. But we'll finish the farmer's quarter first. And what about that special ability? Right here, I assume. This mode will convert industry and money production to science in this city. This mode can be deactivated at no cost after five turns. Okay? Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's what I just said. Alright. Also, this scenario is limited to 30 turns, as you probably noticed. 
So unfortunately, we will not be able to play more than that. But hey, that's better than nothing, right? Keep in mind, the game will not be released until 2021. It was originally going to be released in 2020, but it was delayed because of, you know, all the stuff that's been happening. So now it's coming out in 2021. But it's looking really good. I'm definitely looking forward to it. You need a selection. Throw the army panel, you can use all the army actions that at least one unit is able to do. But you can also manage the units one by one and use their own unit actions. Alright. So transfer this band. Right, we definitely don't want to do that. Here is the sanctuary. And the other dude. We got some horses over here. And another sanctuary. Now, I don't really want to fight wildlife because we lose with only one scout. We did finish calendar research, so that's nice. Right here, research is done. And we discovered the Danakil Desert, apparently. You are the first to discover the Danakil Desert natural wonder. Okay. Is that it? Yes, it is. Well, let's see what it does. Natural wonder control effects. Plus 5 influence per natural wonder. Plus 10 stability per natural wonder on settlement. And plus 10 gold per natural wonder on settlement. Okay. So I guess this should be our next outpost. Most likely. And our next city. So, what do we have here? We got horses. And animal barns. Clear forests. Lumber yard. For some more industry. And archers. Ranged unit. City defense. Warriors. Irrigation. For more food. Public fountain. Plus two stability per number of territories. And a feast ability. Plus two food per number of the same repeatable on city center. That sounds a little bit confusing. We can also unlock the market quarter. Plus one gold per adjacent farmer's quarter, okay? The food market. And the house of scribes. Right, we can also go to the technology screen. So that's the first era. Okay then. Well, what do we want then? Don't really need the domestication right now, I don't think so. We could unlock archers. Or we could go for irrigation, you know, more food and such. This is supposed to be focused on growth, so let's try to grow. Alright, yeah, I'm definitely not fighting you. That would end really poorly, if you can even do that in this scenario. Looks like you can, but no, we're not doing that. Let's go south. Check out that sanctuary. And go away from the big bad deer. All right. So, right here. And what can we do with this? Plus free industry. Can we do anything with that at all? Yeah, ransack. There we go, plus 22 gold. Off we go. Here's another deer. Yeah, definitely not fighting that. He would kick my ass, I can tell you as much. Yes, sir. I know because they did kick my ass when I played I'm on it. in the event few weeks ago, the one I talked about in my earlier video. I couldn't show you the footage, but I did split my scouts and then a deer kicked my ass. That's literally what happened in the first few turns. So now I know better than that. Come over here. Plus 10 gold, okay then. And plus 22 gold. And here's another one to the west. Let's go in that general direction. Should probably start an outpost here. 
Uh, yep. Maybe even right here where we stand. That doesn't look too bad. We'll get some food. Hmm. Yeah, this is actually fine, I think. Okay, let's go with that. Hey, go away. We don't like you. Outpost management. Once you've created an outpost, the territory where it is located is considered claimed and belongs to you. No one else can create an outpost here. Unless an opponent has open borders with you, they can no longer lawfully set food inside either. If for some reason you are not satisfied with the position of your outpost, you can relocate it somewhere else inside your territory. Or inside this specific territory. You can also develop it into a city, enabling resource gathering, infrastructure construction and the military production. But be aware that cities cannot be relocated. In both cases, these operations take several turns to complete. Okay, so here's outpost relocation. And we need more money. So let's wait to get more money. And I would probably prioritize a city over here. You know, next to that natural wonder. That just seems like a better idea overall. How far across the map did we go? Yeah, okay, quite far. This is not a huge map. Generals. Represent the challenges of logistical support for armies. Your empire has a limited number of generals. Unlike administrators, generals are automatically assigned to an army upon creation. A general will also be automatically unassigned if its army is destroyed or merged. If the number of available generals falls to zero, each subsequent leaderless army will incur a monetary cost. This cost increases with each passing turn, so beware. Okay. Good to know. The stock of generals can be increased through technologies or trades. Alright then. Yeah, so the cost increases. Something to keep in mind. But we got 17 generals. Okay. This is the number of your armies led by a general. If you have more armies than generals, your empire will suffer an upkeep penalty. Okay, so like this limit is pretty high. And here is the number of administrators. So here's another scout. Let's send him directly east, shall we? Maybe there's something interesting over there. As for Babylon, so let's see. The farmer's quarter is right here. And we can get some further bonuses if we build things next to it. So, for example... Let's see... Okay, if we get a maker's quarter, we could then get a research quarter next to it. I assume we could also build another farmer's quarter next to the first one. Extension construction. Quarters must be placed adjacent to an existing one. They will exploit all the adjacent unbuilt tiles. Please note the synergies. These mean that at least one unbuilt adjacent tile will augment your new, co your new quarter's production. Left click on a synergized tile to construct your quarter and benefit from the bonus. So right here we can see plus one does the bonus. I don't quite want to build that just yet though. We could use some production. So I'm just checking the bonuses here. So the research quarter has a bonus per adjacent maker's quarter. Where do we want to expand? There's some really nice production in this general direction. So I'm thinking, yeah, probably over here. The game even like shows you the best tile apparently. Plus nine. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Let's go with that then. So that will take six turns. Okay, and let's move on. We can go west. There's the outpost. So I'm thinking this will be the first city. Irrigation research is done, so that unlocks flood irrigation. 
which is plus one for the on exploitations per adjacent river, a public fountain, which is more stability, and feast, plus two for the per number of the same repeatable in city center. All right. And the next up, let's see. So more farmer slots, more food, worker slot, industry on river. Yeah, okay. Wait, no, that's 29 turns. A little bit too much, perhaps. Way too much. How about market quarter? That's plus one gold per adjacent farmer's quarter. We can go with that. We only got 21 turns left. Like I said, these scenarios are short and they are meant to test very specific areas of the game. Like a very narrow slice of the game. Do. I'm on it. Oh hey, we got a unit. Alright then, we got a warrior. Let's maybe send him back towards our cities or so. I don't know if there are any threats in here other than like the wildlife. But let's have at least one dude back home. That sounds like a good practice to me. Okay, city creation will cost us 100 gold. Let's do that then. And here we can see all the effects. It will take three turns. Here we go. Let's go. Here's our resource. Plus two food per coffee, plus five stability per Over coffee. Here. Well, I definitely get more stability IRL when I have my morning coffee. <laughs> I'm very grumpy without my morning coffee. So, let's keep moving east. And the next. Yeah, maybe we should get a few more units and actually attack some of the wildlife. I will do that once I get my warrior back. And by the time he gets here, we can maybe recruit another dude. That would be the general idea. Uh -huh. Alright, let's see what we can yeah. find around here. And yo. Need to go around. Let's continue north. So it looks like we are actually alone on this map. I guess the main purpose is growth and exploration for this scenario, so there are no other civilizations. Well, I mean, there might still be, but it doesn't look like it. We would have found them by now, I think. I assume they would also send out scouts. Here, 15 gold, nice. And 10 science, also nice. Thanks for that. Yeah, this terrain looks pretty good. I don't think you can, like, rotate the map. I don't think so, at least as far as I'm aware. We can show all the yields if we want to do that. They're right here. No, that's the grid. This should be showing yields. At least it did before. Right here. Show high the primary type of output. Generated by quarter. Oh, right. So this just turns on the quarters. Oh, yeah. Here you can see all the yields everywhere. I normally keep this off. Sure, it's informative, but I just really like how the train looks like. So I prefer to keep that off. Same with the grid. It just looks so good. Like, seriously, it looks so good. I'm looking forward to seeing, like, fully developed cities. I also like the way terrain works, compared to Civ. That's going to be a pretty important part of the game. That much is obvious already. Terrain will be way more strategically important. Here's some more gold. We almost have enough for yet another city. And here we got some marble. Industry and stability, alright then. So we need 250 for the next city. 
I could also just get artisan squatter. That's an option. I would have to relocate though. This is not a luxury, is it? I guess it is actually. So we could relocate there and then use artisan squatter. Might not be a terrible idea. That's not valid. Okay, hold on. Uh, it said it has to be built on top. Oh, right, I can build like this. I thought it like transforms the outpost itself. So let's build it there then. Here. So that way we'll get plus two food and plus five stability on all our cities. And here we got the salt. So, the invention of the calendar heralded a glorious day in the Empire's history. Now, with two major cities and numerous farming affairs needing to be harmonized across the land, it is time to standardize the calendar. Traders must have easy means of synchronizing their activities. By what means do you wish to track the days? Solar, lunar. So, this doesn't seem to have any direct effect on the game, as in, there don't seem to be any bonuses attached to either. Let's go with the Lunar, why not? Yeah, that doesn't seem to have any direct effect or bonus, as far as I can tell. Over this way. Here's writing, so that unlocks the market quarter, which we can build next to the farmer's quarter, the food market and the house of scribes. And we found the great blue hole. Nice. Let's check it out. Effects. Plus two food, plus one vision range. Natural wonder control effects. Plus five influence per natural wonder. Plus ten stability, plus ten gold. Yeah, we probably want an outpost here. And by probably I mean we definitely want an outpost here. Uh, first we need more money apparently. So hopefully we'll get that. Unadministered. There is no administrator assigned to the city, meaning production is diminished. If there is an unavailable administrator in your resource banner, left click to assign it. So there it is. We got one. So that means we can assign him right here. Okay, so now I'm out of administrators, which means that if I get another city, it will not have an administrator, at least not yet. So, let's see, what do we want to build here first? Some gold would be nice, perhaps. So, that's what I'm thinking. What else? Obviously, food is an option. Yeah, food might be a little bit better, because we don't have a whole lot of food where we actually settled. So, let's expand in this general direction. And let's check our citizen assignments here. Okay, we got one on food and one on industry. Okay. Let's keep one on the food then. Can we speed up the maker's quarter? It will be done on the next turn anyway. So let's maybe move one of them to money, because I need more money. No, not both, one. Here, so keep one on food and one on money. As for our next research, yeah, definitely not anything that will take 18 turns, because we simply do not have enough time for that. Let's go with carpentry. That will allow us to clear forests and to get lumber yards. And recruit archers. Or idle armies. Yes, yes, I'm aware. Let's go find some more gold. Here's our resource. Okay. Interesting. A game of prophecy. With the empire thriving, a new game hailing from a foreign land beguiles the population. Everywhere you go, the distinctive game board and pieces catching your eye. Insisting on a public demonstration, you play the game under instruction in your palace court. But the event has a sting in the tail. The game is reckoned to be a form of divination as well as entertainment. 
gasps could be heard as the game's prophecy became clear. You are fated to lose everything. What will you do? What the heck? Minus 80 gold? Well, I don't even have 80 gold. Let the people gossip. The prophecy will soon be proved false. Minus 5 stability for 10 turns. Minus 2 science for 10 turns. Okay, let's just take this science penalty. So, let's move on. Hopefully get more money. Right here. We finished carpentry. So I still need more gold. Let's just stay in this general area. We will still get that outpost. I just want to take a look around. Okay, nothing to see in that direction. Here's some more gold. Actually, that wasn't gold, was it? The settlement is not constructing anything. Don't worry, it will. It's fine. Come over here. We got 32 gold. And we are making 26, so that's not too bad. Okay, so we already got the farmer's quarter. Right? No, that's Babylon. So we finished the maker's quarter right here. Okay. So... Let's see. This is the maker's quarter. I think I'll keep this option enabled. It makes it much easier to see where the quarters are. We can clearly see this is the farmer's quarter because it's green. And this is the maker's quarter. So we can see that at a glance. I like that. So now we could get the market quarter perhaps. Get some more money. And we can see the synergies. That's going to be plus one. So... What are the other options here? We got the research quarter and the commons quarter. We should also get a millstone or a granary. Plus four food per number of territories. Yeah, that's useful. Let's go with that. Anyway, research. Fishing. That would unlock the harbor and the fishery. I'm not sure if I'll have the time to use either of them, but maybe. We only got 16 turns left, so that's not a whole lot. We shall see. Here, more money. And no, I definitely do not want to fight the deer, thank you very much. It doesn't look like it will attack me, so that's good. I don't plan attacking them. Okay, two more armies. Here's some more gold. Plus ten gold. And another one over there. Yeah. And here's another one. Right, we need 100. Uh, actually, no, we need 250. If we want another city. Or just spend the money on outposts. Since I don't have any more administrators anyway. Okay, what can we build? We can build astronomy house. So that's food per researchers and science per adjacent farmer's quarter. That's actually interesting. Maybe we should build that. Like over here. Plus nine. Okay. Let me see the yields. Need to exit this screen. Yeah, ready? Here. Okay. So let's go with Astronomy House. Uh, no, that was not Astronomy House. Whoops. Was it? No, it was. What else can we do? More money per number of territories. More industry. Plus one food on exploitations per adjacent river. Granary, plus five food per number of territories, plus one farmer slot. Also some units. This guy requires copper, which we do not currently have. And the feast, plus two food per number of the same repeatable on city center. Yeah, some of these are a little bit confusing. It might take 
a bit of time to figure out what the optimal order is and such. But hey, that's fine. I like exploring new games. And I have some major hopes for this game. I'm really hoping it will be some solid alternative slash competition for Solization 6. Anyway, what do we want to build then? I kind of like this astronomy house. Let's build that then. So, right here. Okay, works for me. Next. Fishing. Well, in theory, we could build a harbor. Might not be worth doing it, but we can. Okay, so let's claim the blue hole. Right here. I think we can afford an outpost. Yes, we can. I mean, the outpost itself doesn't really cost anything. It's upgrading it that costs. Okay. I think focusing on the gold early on makes a lot of sense. Because that way you can claim more stuff. You can claim more resources, more wonders, more territories. And a lot of bonuses seem to rely on you having more territories. You get a bigger bonus with more territories. So gold seems to be very, very important early on. Alright, let's get something cheap. I don't think I will need city walls or anything like that. We'll go with domestication. 14 turns left. Not a whole lot of time. You there. Yep, farmer's quarters still under construction. So there's the outpost. Let's move on then. It will be done in one turn. Here's more money. Will do. Let's go. We can probably like almost explore the entire map by the time we're done. It seems like that's one of the purposes of this scenario. Just explore the entire map. Here's domestication. What's that? Okay. Plus on vision range for the industry science. Come over here. Let's go east. Oh, this is the warrior. Let's actually just go back towards our cities. Can we go east through here? Kind of? Sort of? A bit? No need to stay around here anymore. So there's the outpost. I can't afford anything else right now. Yeah, the costs go up quite a bit, as you can see. And then again, my income will also go up quite a bit. Let's just merge these. We got two warriors right now. Off we go. And hey, maybe I'll attack a deer before we're done to take revenge. Masonry. Stoneworks. Okay, plus one industry on mountain, plus five industry on strategic resource deposit, watchtower, and forced labor. Working citizens, this heart will send many to an early grave, but sometimes the needs of the empire necessitate sacrifice. Damn right. <laughs> it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. <laughs> if you get the reference. Many of you will die, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Alright, we got 12 more turns. Here's more money, 10 gold. All right. In before this is a dead end. Eh, no, we can go through, nice. There's masonry. Off we go. Still a little bit of unexplored land. Over this way. Okay, and back in Babylon, we just finished the astronomy house. We also got more population, so... Let's see. We could maybe speed up the growth. 
but I want some of them on gold. You are able to build a harbor. Harbors exploit all coastal tiles within two tile radius and create synergies with the market quarters. They are also required to build ships. Right. So we didn't build the market quarter yet. Let's build the harbor, why the heck not? So I'm thinking... Yeah, right here. Or right here, actually. That the market quarter can be here. Sounds good, let's go with that. Buyout. You now have enough money to afford this constructible without, war without waiting. You can obtain it straight away by clicking the buyout. Right, that will cost us 228. Let's do that. I mean, it's not like we have a lot of time left. Might as well do it. And then we can build a market quarter. Let's say right here. Okay. That's fine. Maybe speed it up slightly. Five turns. Sounds good to me. Horsemanship. Scout cavalry. Yeah, I don't need scout cavalry anymore. Some ships. Fishmonger. Not sure if I'll have enough time to build any ships. I mean, not that there's much to explore, but there's some sea over here. Who knows, maybe there's something interesting over there. We can take a look. Scenes of the Father. The birth of writing has permitted word of your great deeds to be recorded and disseminated among your people, but it also allowed the person's debts to be tallied. In the past, a person's debts died with them. Now they are inherited by their offspring. However, in the new city of Sipar, the political leadership wishes to strike these debts from the record for anyone who makes the city their home. What do you say? Oh, plus two population, but minus 100 gold. Would we go into the negatives? Let's find out. I'm actually not sure. Yeah, I guess we will. So let's see if anything is going to happen there, because I'm making more money than our negative is at the moment. Here, more gold. I didn't seem to actually get any. Uh, that was 10 science over there. We almost explored the entire map now. Also, I'm glad that this is like a more chilled out scenario, because that's kind of what I really needed right now. It's nice and chill. And it looks so good. Sailing is done. Okay then. So we got 10 more turns. Again, not a whole lot of time, but we'll see what we can do with it. I'll try to get a ship just because I can. Hopefully, I can. Yeah, not a whole lot of land left to explore, but we still got a few things we can pick up. Here, so we finished... What did we finish? Oh yeah, that's a different city. Farmer's Quarter. I was thinking about Babylon. So that gives us more food. Yeah, definitely not in the harbor in this city. That would be a little bit awkward. Granary, animal barns. Well, plus for food. A number of territories. Some industry. Yeah, let's go with pottery workshop. Okay, next up. Might as well pick up city defense. Not that we need city defense, but whatever. We'll have it anyway, all right? Still quite a bit to explore down here, actually. Come over here. These are the warriors. So... Let's, go. let's maybe try to attack. Because why not? Let's go. I should be able to win that one. Okay, here's our capital. No, that's not the capital, <laughs> that's Sipar again, right. 
Well then, okay, what would actually be useful right now? Let's see. Yeah, definitely can't build a ship here. We could just go for more production. Oh yeah, that would be pretty good. Plus 10 production, minus 2 food. Yeah, that's a trade I'm willing to make. Here's city defense. And let's fight! Okay, so you've engaged an enemy in a battle. If this was a mistake, you can cancel. Yeah, we don't want to cancel. If you do so, the army will be moved automatically using its maximum movement points. No matter if they have been spent before. Until the end of the turn, the retreating army will receive a retreat status. Blocking several army actions and preventing further retreat. Not that the enemy can also choose to retreat. You can also confirm. Yep, we will confirm. So what the heck, let's do it. So here's the deployment phase. And in the deployment phase, we can move the units around the battlefield inside our deployment area. And you can also use the auto battle toggle if you don't want to do this manually. So that's a thing. And you can see that our side is stronger overall. There is no path to the destination. Okay. I guess we need to go around. Oh, hi. So, yeah, here's the preview. We got sent in combat strength and plus four from the high ground. It's over, dear. We have the high ground. Note that you can end around any time by left clicking on this button. You can also activate or deactivate auto battle mode by clicking auto battle mode. That's not possible. Makes sense. One more attack. So that's around basically. It didn't move. Well then we'll go there ourselves. Works for me, now it's moving. Yes, hello. That is not very nice. Wildlife AI is playing. Not anymore, it's not. So, well, that's that. We won. Go us. Alright, so there's still some gold over there. And what's this? Brown sack. Plus Tonito gold. Yeah, but I'll take that. Philosophy. Skull. Well, normally that would be nice, but the game will end in 8 turns, so we will not be doing that. Let's unlock copper, shall we? Forge for some production, spearmen, and also a castle. Plus 10 fortification. So it's basically a garrison you can place. And land units will also spawn there. Here's some gold. Doesn't have to be gold, it can be some other yields, like science. That was 10 gold, there's bronze working. Okay then, yeah, let's just go pick that up. How's our city doing? We finished the market quarter right here. So now we are making 63 gold per turn. And we can see the breakdown. Plus 63 from free settlements. Okay, so we got 7 turns left. Again, not a whole lot. Let's see. We are about to get plus 1 on the next turn. Let's get a ship. There might not be much point building one, but I want to build one, damn it. So I will build one, alright? Horseman ship, because we can actually finish that in time. 
and we'll send that ship west. Who knows, maybe there's actually something interesting over there? Like dragons? <laughs> I mean, probably not the dragons, but hey, you never know. There's horsemanship. Not much point getting scout cavalry at this point. We already explored 90% of the map, basically. So no need for that anymore. Probably no point building any more outposts. I normally would be doing that at this point. But we already got two of them. We saw how they work. That was the purpose. The wheel. Okay, so chariot. Charge bonus. Requires copper and horses. And automatically creates roads between cities. I like that. And that will be done in time. Roads are definitely appreciated. I could actually build some more outposts, just generally speaking. That is not a terrible idea. Normally you probably want to do that like kind of on the way. I do have enough money here. Well, what the heck, let's just start city creation, because why not? Next to the Great Blue Hole. Where's my ship? The flooded lands. It's Sipar again. Chance to trigger terrible consequences. Ooh, I like terrible consequences. Let's go with that. Did we get terrible consequences? I'm not seeing any overly terrible consequences. <laughs> not at first glance, anyway. Okay, here's the ship, so let's send it west. We got whole five turns to explore the sea. Oh, here's some more money. As for Babylon... Well, again, something useful in the next five turns would be nice. Here's the watchtower. So... Okay, we don't quite need that. Nope. Remove that, thanks. A castle. So we can place a castle on any tile within our territory. That's how it works. It would be nice in some choke points, for example. And there are some like pretty crazy choke points. If we had a city down here, and we had like a eye to the east, then we could place it right here inside the choke point. And it would provide us with some fortification bonus. But yeah, we can like place it over here and then build it. So that's how that works. The wheel. Four turns left. Come on now, let's go. I'm kind of hoping we'll see something interesting over there. <laughs> Not just a sea of blue. But, I mean, I'm not expecting anything overly exciting. Five gold. We're getting, like, less gold than we did at the start. I think that deer is standing right on top of the stash. How rude! That is very rude indeed. Okay, we will not be finishing any more research, unfortunately. So, here's standing army. Aaron, city watch, and swordsman. Okay, sure. Yes, go away. There, plus 10 research. Yes, let's keep going. I see a border over there. Okay. Maybe there is something that we can actually find. More money. Oh, we got another unit. Nice. Let's just merge them. Right, we got three turns left, so construction doesn't really matter anymore, but we unlocked quite a few things. Stability is right here. 
74% right now. Okay. A public fountain. Plus two stability per number of territories. Sure, we can build that. Wait, where did my ship go? What the heck? Maybe you can't sail too far away from land. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh, here are the consequences, I take it. Flooded on sea power for 10 turns. Okay, these penalties are pretty gross. However, it's not going to be for 10 turns, it's going to be for 2 turns. And I guess this is what happened with our ship. <laughs> it got lost in the Bermuda Triangle. Oh well, now we know what's going to happen. That's going to happen. Good to know. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of space to develop this particular city. So I think a harbor would be best. In this specific case. Yep. I mean, that would clearly be best for a city like this. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. We Unfortunately, go. we are basically done. So, that's that. That's open dev. If you want to apply yourself, you will find a link in my video description. So these will be a few scenarios. Hi, it's me again, back to say just a few words. First and most obviously, thank you for playing. We really hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, keep in mind that this is just a glimpse of what the full game will have to offer. The scenario you just played was specifically designed for open dev. Now, if you have time, we would really appreciate hearing your feedback. The game designers have put together a list of questions that would help us make humankind the very best historical strategy game. If you're interested in hearing more about this, come join the community on Games Together. Thanks again for playing, and thank you for leaving your mark on humankind. Yeah, what he said. So, thanks for watching. I will send some feedback after this video. And I will definitely be doing more Humankind as these scenarios are released. They are time limited, so if you actually get in, you will only be able to play them for a few days. And obviously, I will play the game itself once it's released. I'm quite looking forward to it. And this was a nice chill scenario. I actually enjoyed that. This is what I needed today. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and a comment, and subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you next time in Humankind. Bye-bye.